vlogmas day six so I am just finishing up my skincare right now and got dressed <clears throat> I severely need to take a bath but I also want to film kind of like a sit down chit chatty type thing and explain what I do after I <laughs> what I do after having more harp, high carb days and how I sort of like recover from that but I want to get cute before I sit down and chat with you guys and share exactly what I do so I'm probably going to let my skincare, my moisturizer sit on my face for a few minutes before I put on makeup and sit down and chat with you guys. So in the meantime, I'm going to start editing the vlog that's going to be going live today and we'll meet back here in a few. enough so I'm just pinning my hair back and I am using the stay naked weightless liquid foundation because it is the only foundation that I have in my color right now <laughs> I think I bought it last year and it is for sure my winter shade <clears throat> the last time I tried getting the foundation that I've really been loving they could not figure out my color so i'm kind of considering taking this one in and being like can you find a shade that's super close to this one because it seems to work well and i am almost out of the color one of my things to do today is call my nail place and see when they can get me in finally ready for the day and like I said I really wanted to talk to you guys about hey bud he's super freaked out because I just vacuumed What's up, puppy? talk to you guys about what I do after a hard um, high carb day so normally if I just ate like rice for a dinner or I had a sweet potato I wouldn't do this but when I go a little bit <clears throat> harder like I did for our after Thanksgiving Thanksgiving uh, where I ate waffles for <clears throat> excuse me where I ate waffles um, for two days and quite a few of them. 
that's when I feel like I oh and I had ice cream and I had blah 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 like starchy vegetables stuff like that so we did that one day last week and then twice this weekend so I'm definitely feeling like I've had my feast and now it's time to fast so typically what I'll do is I will go about a day to two days without having any food but I will share with you what I am having or I will do a couple days of OMAD and I feel like that sort of resets my body I haven't totally decided what I'm going to do and I don't typically make I mean sometimes I make a game plan but typically what I do is I kind of just feel what my body is saying to me and I kind of go with that so I've already dis I'll decide that I want to do a fast but I don't necessarily set a time frame on it ahead of time if that makes sense so I felt like it was really important to share with you guys why I fast and also my thought process behind it and then the types of things that I do have while I'm fasting. I've read a lot of really incredible books on fasting. Um, I'll link them down below. I think one of them is, gosh, what are they called? I think one of them is The Guide to Fasting. Yeah, The Guide to Fasting by Jason Fung, super good. Anything by Jason Fung is really good. The Obesity Code was really amazing. Um, also, a lot of Mark Sisson's books talk about fasting and the importance of it. Specifically, tw the 21 Day Metabolism Reset Keto Diet book is a really good one that talks about fasting. It's super scientific, so if you're into that kind of thing, I would recommend that book. Um, but yeah, it's really important for your body. It's something that our ancestors did regularly, and it's the only way that your cells really reset and um, one of the apps that I highly recommend is, let me show you, it's called Fastic. So if you're just starting out with fasting and you just want like the quick rundown of it, they give you information on fasting. And this is what it looks like. I haven't used it for a while, but it is a really good one if you're just getting started and you want to start calculating how many hours you're fasting and you want to get into a fasting routine. I think it's a really great way to start. It also tracks your water consumption if you want to track that and a couple other things. So I do want to share with you guys what I have when I'm fasting. So I've already had two cups of coffee today, totally black. Um, you can also have, I believe Jason Fung said, talks about in his book, The Fasting Guide, what you can have when you're fasting that won't throw you out of uh, your fast. And one of those things is having MCT oil in your coffee. So I believe you can have about a teaspoon without throwing you, yourself off. It might be a teaspoon or a tablespoon, but I think a teaspoon sounds right. And then um, you can also have about a teaspoon of milk without throwing yourself off. If you have any more than that, it is probably going to throw your fast. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm saying um a lot. I know what I'm talking about, but it feels weird sharing because I'm not usually the type of person that like gives information. That's why I prefer my vlogs to be a little bit more showing you what I'm doing. But Brian thought that it would be really helpful if I actually talk to you about why I'm doing it and sort of the benefits. Uh, another thing that I feel like really struck me as being super interesting when I was reading that book is that literally every single religion used to have fasting as a part of their um, religion. 
So it was something that was regularly taken on after our ancestral days. And with what has happened in industries like the sugar industry, they've all pushed not fasting and eating more food and more food and six meals a day. Like I remember when I was in high school, six meals a day was like six small meals a day was like all the hype. And it's basically just eating more, eating more, eating more. When in reality, if we want to lose weight, we should be eating less. I wouldn't consider starving yourself being a good thing. Like I know I had a I had an eating disorder when I was in high school, in my freshman year of high school. So I don't want you to think of it as a starvation method. Also, it's not recommended to fast when you're still growing. So if you're still a teenager, I don't recommend fasting. I don't recommend it for kids. And women that are pregnant also shouldn't be doing fasting. But Talk to your healthcare professional about it beforehand. This is just what works for me and what I've learned through the years. Um, so anyways, what I want to stress is you shouldn't be starving yourself to lose weight. You should be, you should have a well-nourished body. I especially think it's important to, I personally really loved Mark Sisson's 21 Day Metabolism Reset book because it resets your body then you go into a keto style diet and from there you start doing fasting. I think it's a slow progression. You want to make sure that your body is completely fat adapted. It makes fasting a lot easier. And I will say that fasting, doing longer fasts, like if you do it more than two days, yeah, it's uncomfortable. But if you know that your body has been well nourished, you've taken really good care of yourself, it's still a really great thing for your body to do. I also found found that I feel really good when I do a fast. You know, like the second or third day is a little bit more difficult, but it's not it's not super super bad and then it get all gets easier after that point. So I believe it was also in Jason Fung's book, The Fasting Guide that talks about the fact that if you're going to do a, an extended fast, it's easier and better to do a week-long fast because after day two or day three, it gets really easy. And then you you can do less week-long fasts versus doing a lot of really short fasts, like a, a one to two day fast. So anyways, that's my experience with fasting. I really enjoy it. Today, I'm just gonna take you along and show you what I have for the rest of the day. Um, one thing that I highly recommend having on hand in case you get hungry is having some bone broth. Homemade is the best option. So if you plan ahead that you're going to do a fast, I highly recommend cooking a whole chicken, eating the meat off of it, and then saving the bones and making a bone broth. That's what we really enjoy doing. You can also talk to a butcher and see if there's anything that they throw away that you can buy from them. That's also a really smart option. Um, we do have that leftover turkey broth, so I may have that later on today. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that, yes, having the bone broth will technically throw you off your fast. However, in Jason Fung's book, he talks about the fact that even though having bone broth may throw you off your fast, it's more a benefit than a downfall to have it. It's really good for your body to have bone broth. So if there's anything that you have during your fast, I would recommend having bone broth. It's such a great option. Um, I would recommend fasting as long as you can before you have that bone broth. So a lot of times, uh, if I'm not eating and Brian is, and I smell his food and it makes me feel like I kind of want to have food, regardless of whether I'm hungry or not, smelling it sort of makes you want food, right? So what I like to do is I like to have bone broth when he has dinner, and that just keeps me on track. It keeps me going for longer, and it's nice and warm and comforting also, I find. So especially during the winter time, it's really nice. 
Now I will say that I'm probably going to be a little bit more cautious this time because we are, I don't know how much I should share about this. <laughs> We are technically trying to conceive, so I want to be extra careful and be extra um, safe with my body. And if there's any chance that I'm pregnant right now, like I want to be extra, extra careful. So I'll share with you the supplements that I take while I'm fasting and the types of things that I have during a fast. Hello. <laughs> So this might sound kind of funny, but my first tip is after coffee, brush your teeth. <laughs> Hear me out for a second. So obviously brushing your teeth after coffee is a really great thing. It helps get rid of all that acidic stuff that sits on your teeth and kind of uh, stains them. But what I find really interesting is if I don't brush my teeth right after coffee, I sort of feel like a craving for food because that it just like sits on my mouth all those oils and everything from the coffee and it makes me more prone to wanting to eat versus if my if I brush my teeth then my my mouth feels like really clean and I don't want to eat anything for a while after I've brushed my teeth like I like feeling that clean feeling I know this sounds so funny, but it, it totally works for me. I don't know why, but having that fresh minty kind of thing happening in my mouth makes it so that I don't want to snack or eat anything in the meantime. Hope that's helpful. Tip number two is to drink tons of water. I notice that when I'm on my normal eating schedule, which is around two meals a day, that I don't drink nearly as much water as I would like to. And so when I'm doing a longer fast, even if it's just for a full day or an OMAD, this is the ideal time to focus on getting liquids in your body and filling up on some water, rehydrating your body and focusing on I think I like to think of it as when I'm doing a regular meal day I'm focusing on nourishing my body when I'm fasting I'm focusing on hydrating my body my third tip is to drink electrolyte powder so I really like to use Dr. Berg's electrolyte powder. Brian doesn't like it so much because it does tend to clump together. So we did get this other brand that we've been using. Hold on one sec. It's by Key Nutrients Electrolyte Recovery Plus in Peach Mango. And I like to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to mine. I think it cuts down on the sweetness and yeah, I really enjoy it. I will say that I am trying to cut down on stevia, which I believe that this has, yeah, it has stevia leaf extract in it. So in the carnivore code book that we read, we read that um, stevia in a, in a tribe, it's used as a natural contraceptive. So <laughs> because we are trying to get pregnant, this is not the greatest option for me to be having, so I probably will not be consuming this today, but it is something that on a normal day I would have if, if I'm fasting or not fasting. I should rephrase that. It's something that I have during my fast typically. Also, it's something that I have on a regular day while I'm still in a fasted state. Not that you have to have it in a fasted state, I just prefer to do that so that I'm consuming something beneficial for my body and um, that way I don't feel like I'm missing out when Brian's having breakfast or something like that. Tip number four is actually something that I learned from Jason Fung's book. He talks about when you start feeling hungry, what you should do. 
and that typically once you start feeling hungry, if you give yourself a two hour window, that hunger sort of subsides. I can't remember why that is, but I do remember it being a thing. So what I recommend doing while you're trying to see if you're actually hungry or is your body just sending you hunger signals is to consume more water. If that doesn't help, make a black coffee or a tea and add about a teaspoon of that MCT oil to it. And MCT oil is, is basically just a buttload of fat. I mean, it's entirely fat. And so that will help make you feel that fullness signal, send that fullness signal to your brain. And if that doesn't help, that's when I would recommend having the bone broth. That's kind of like your last go-to. My recommendation is to have that be your last go-to thing because that will stop your fast for a small amount of time. And you can also add the MCT oil to that to make it a little bit more fatty and enjoyable. Granted, I really, really love our bone broth. Like, I think it's kind of like the best thing ever. It's seasoned really well, which is another thing that I recommend doing when you're making your bone broth. Make sure it's well seasoned. You want it to be super flavorful. I don't know anybody that wants their bone broth to be plain. My next tip is to keep yourself busy. I find that when I have a really full day, it makes it easier to not concentrate on my stomach or being hungry. It makes me feel like my brain is really focused. I'm going, going, going. So a lot of times on days where I have a hair appointment or a chiropractor appointment, it's really easy to keep myself busy before getting work done and making sure that I'm productive before going. My hair appointment usually lasts a really long time. So uh, if I do my shorter appointments, I last to like noon. And so I've already got all that time gone that I haven't, I haven't been eating and that I'm not focused or around food at all. So that's really helpful. It can also just be one of those days where you have a lot of errands to run or groceries to get. Why are you being such a butt? Huh? Why are you being such a little butt? What you got going, huh? What you got going on? I think this is going to be my last tip. My last tip to you is if you find that you're still really hungry after the two hours has passed, I highly recommend at that point eating something that is extremely nutritious. So I recommend having something that is mostly consisting of meat. And if you're eating vegetables, having a low starch, a, lo a low in starch vegetable. That way your body can stay in ketosis rather than falling out and making all the work that you just did for nothing. I hope that this video was super helpful. I know it's a little bit different for it to be a Vlogmas video, but I wanted to share all of the things that I do and why I do them in hopes that it's really helpful for you, especially around the holidays. I Here's my thought around it. I want to have balance in my life, and for so long I have yo-yoed all over the place, and Typically, when I've fallen off track, I've fallen off so hard and it's been really difficult to get back. And no matter how many times I tell my brain that I want to get back on track, I didn't do it. So the last time that I fell off keto, I think I was off for six months. We did it for six months and then I was off for six months. And with being carnivore, I have found it really easy to stay on track and to be really intentional about the times where I choose to have a higher carb day. And one of those times is going to be when I have a family dinner and especially when we're celebrating Thanksgiving, take two, 
Um, and I'm also considering Christmas being a day where I intentionally eat what I want <laughs> and not being restrictive. And I think that that's totally fine, but I, I feel like it's important to balance it out with having a fast and eating really good nutritious foods in between those times. So in my past, once the, the season starts getting colder and you start having all these family get togethers, that's always what throws me off track. Like as soon as November hits, I feel like all the sweets that come into play get really hard to resist in the past. That's always what happens. And this year, I just want to make sure that I'm being really intentional with the way that I treat my body, with the types of things that I'm giving it, and also being intentional about the days that I choose to have off, and off meaning that they're higher carb days, and the meals that I'm having in between that that are really beneficial for me. So this year I just want to be different. This year I want to stick to my goals and stick to the things that are really meaningful to me and having a healthy body and a healthy mindset is really important to me this year and that's what I'm focusing on. I'll take you around for the rest of the day and show you the types of things that I'm having and the choices that I make and when I decide to cut my fast. So you'll see it all here and hope you enjoy it. It is 1.52 currently and I had some issues with editing my video so I'm just now exporting it, gonna try to get it to go live. It's gonna be a little bit late but oh well. Um, I was thinking Brian just had some soup. He accidentally, he didn't hear me say that I wasn't eating today so he made enough for the both of us but I restrained myself. Usually when he makes food for both of us and I haven't like told him that I'm not going to be eating, I usually can't help myself, but I am determined that today I'm going to stick to it. I wasn't feeling hungry either, so that makes it a little bit easier, but I am feeling like I want something, so I'm going to make myself another coffee because I want something warm and comforting for my tummy. Let's make some coffee. While I'm waiting for my water to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my supplements for the day. And the supplements that I take while I'm fasting are these grass-fed beef organs. I'm gonna be taking three of them now and probably three around dinner time. You are supposed to take about six a day if you're not eating uh, organs in your regular diet. But because I'm fasting, I still think that it's an important supplement to take. I don't think that it's going to do anything to ruin my fast and it provides all the nutrients that you need. So I don't need to take my other supplements, my prenatals right now. I also can't take them right now because I'm fasting and they have zinc in them and zinc, if you don't know, makes your stomach super upset if you have it without any food. So. That is what I'm gonna be taking while I am waiting for water. Sounds like it's almost done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and have a raspberry lime bubbly water. 
I've been super impressed by this one. We just picked it up at Safeway the other day. So good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know what it is about it, but it's just like hits all the right places. Like the flavor is super there. Love it. Mm. I'm still not feeling hungry. I did feel a little bit hungry at some point when Brian was making food. Yeah. I did say that I wasn't feeling hungry, but I did feel a grumble in my tummy around the time that he was making food. And yeah, that's part of why I decided to make the coffee. It's not really hungry, hungry, like where your stomach is like infuriated with you, but it was definitely like, all right, I should probably have something. So black coffee it was, hunger totally went away. Bubbly water is going in and I'm just going to continue on this motivated hunt hunt no this motivated endeavor to try to get ahead on my videos i can't believe that it's been such a whirlwind today like all the things that could go wrong kind of went wrong it's hard to get ahead when things go wrong you know I'm like, I have things, I have other things that I need to take care of besides editing a video, if you know what I mean. Anyways, I'm going to make a reel posting to post on Instagram, sharing that my video is live and hopefully we can move on with our lives. We are trying something different tonight. We're trying rosemary eggs mm -hmm. in lots of butter. Butter. It's 5.06 and I just decided that because Brian's just going to have some eggs, cheese, and salami that I'm going to go ahead and eat with him. And I've gone all day without eating so this is going to be technically an OMAD day. But this is how I do a fasted day also or how I'm able to push through for this long. Took the rosemary out and is gonna add the eggs. to cook the egg whites separate so I make sure that the whites get really well done and then I don't overcook the yolks. Texturally it gives it a really interesting, really yummy Yeah, it's a lot more feel. silky. Mm -hmm. Looks like I got a little bit of rosemary. Oops. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. It really supports my channel. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.